conquerors 400 years ago, wild horses have roamed the western plains, and man has set out to capture and tame them ever since. First the Indian and then the cowboy. A horse broken to man's will helps in his work or provides sport for his leisure moments. Danger is in the air, sensed, not seen. Trouble from another source. A lone stallion joins the herd to challenge the authority of the leader. The battle for supremacy is over, but the battle between man and beast has only begun. The horses are off and the cowboys after them. The chase is on. Men on horses already trained to the saddle against the wild. For centuries, the horse has been a faithful servant and friend of man. But first, he has to be captured and tamed. Their days of unbridled freedom come to an end. Now he must learn to accept man's bidding. At first he fights the encroaching leather with all the fierce pride of his birthright. and then a man. But often it's harder on the man. Since the dawn of time, horses have roamed the American continent. But for some reason buried in the past, they vanished until the Spanish explorers brought them back. A new race came from Spain, and from Spain too, came the noble Lipizzans, the famous white stallions of the Spanish Riding Academy. Unlike wild horses, the Lipizzans have been bred for centuries for the specific purpose of classical riding, prancing through the intricate steps of a quadrille on horseback. It's a far cry from wild horses of the Western Plains. The ancestors of these Lipizzans carried Julius Caesar into battle. The long relationship of man and beast covers many moods, many tasks at work or play. Some have been bred and trained as saddle horses for just the simple pleasure of riding, or the more exciting pursuit of following the hounds on a fox hunt. Yoikes and away, and the gentry in their pink coats astride their spirited horses, gallop across the fields and over the fences in pursuit of Br'er Fox. It's sort of an amateur steeplechase, obstacles to clear, straightaway dashes, hazards on every hand. Fox is at bay, the hunt is over. But there is no end of thrills on horseback, and to some sportsmen no thrill so full of zest and speed and danger as polo. Here again the polo pony has been bred for a purpose, to be fleet of foot and capable of responding to instant commands. The Persians trained horses to play polo 4,000 years ago. The British brought the sport back from India a century ago. And as a result, a new sport was in the making. Sometimes it's rough. Another specialist is the jumper. The keenest competition at horse shows is among the cavalry. And again, the horses are the product of special breeding and training.
teamwork here reminds us of man's long dependence upon the horse to carry him over many obstacles. And thrill is piled upon thrill. But where would be the sport without the risk? As typically American as the hot dog is harness racing. It started in the United States where the horse was schooled in the special gait that distinguishes him from all other racers. It might be said that here the saddle is a sulky. When they bunch up at the turns, trouble often results with sulky and driver unceremoniously dumped in trotters breaking stride. But training and instinct beat strongly, and a trotter stays in the running. The toughest battle of all in the Waterloo for many horses is the steeplechase, one of Turfdom's most hazardous events. As many as 30 starters get away, but only a few will finish. The toughest obstacles devised by man and nature take their toll along the way, and one after another, entries are eliminated. Ranks get thinner and another jump takes its toll. Heartbreak and tragedy hold the reins for many a noble animal. Now it is a race between four horses, four out of 30 that started. And at the last jump, no rider to guide him, one horse takes a shortcut. The others battle it out in a stretch drive. Yes, trading and breeding have their say, and rich are the rewards for the winners. The sport of kings, a race against time. The press of a button by the starter sends a field of fleet sprinters off and running in a test of speed and stamina, all fighting for a favorite position. The crowd reacts to a pulsating drama of thundering hoops. It's not always the favorite that wins. It's the will and the way of horse and rider as they battle to the wire. Pounding down the stretch, neck and neck, nose to nose, in a fevered pitch of suspense and excitement. Faithful and obedient at work or at play, the horse has truly served man well. 